Stuck in the dream, so I keep sleeping. So no I feel no pain at all. So let's just be fall off the deep end. One night, one chance, let's go. So can we take just a moment? Can we take just a moment with you right next to me? So can we take just a moment? Can we live in the moment? What is up, Vive? Go ahead and make your way to your seat. Service is starting. Are you excited to be here on Revive Night? If you're in the back, go ahead, go ahead and head to your seat wherever you want to sit tonight. If you don't know me, my name is Katie on the team here at West Coast Church serving with the Vive, the best group of young adults in town. Do you believe it makes some noise? And maybe you're watching us online. We are so stoked that you are here today. Listen, if you're in the building, do me a favor. Take out your phone. Share this live stream. You guys can find it on our West Coast Church page or on the Vive page. Share this live stream so your friends and family can be with us even if they're not with us. And then check in. Let everybody know that this is where you hang out on a Sunday night and invite them to join you next week or the week after that. Also, 
If you're watching online, go ahead and share it. You can check in as well. Again, we're glad that you are a part of our service tonight. And then make sure your phone is silenced and put away. You do not want to miss anything. And if you are new tonight, make sure you visit our table in the back. Our team is excited to meet you. We have a gift for you just for showing up and being a part of the family. Now, it is Revived Night. So what this looks like tonight is a whole lot of worship and a whole lot of God's word. We love Revive. So in a moment, we are about to worship. I'll come out. We have an opportunity to give tonight as young adults. We don't have to just sit back. We can be active and what God wants to do in our church. We have an opportunity to give. I'll give some updates on some exciting things that we have coming up. And then Pastor Nancy is bringing the word, y'all. It's been a minute since she's gotten to preach to the vibe, so we are excited. And then we'll close out our service. We, oh, it's a time of prayer. We just connect with one another, pray for one another, and then we're gonna hang out. So it's gonna be a good night. If you're excited, get on your feet, run to the front as Pastor Michael, Vanessa, and the team lead us into God's presence with some awesome worship. Guys, you ready for Revive? All right, come on, come on, from the back to the front. Everybody press in, you ready? Put those hands together. When night has fallen and fear is coming, still you're calling me.
lift up a shout of praise in this place. Thank you, Jesus. I raise a hallelujah. In the present. In the, in the presence of my enemies. I raise a
Jesus, we worship you. We raise that hallelujah tonight. Thank you so much that you take dead things and you make them alive. You take old things and you make them new. You take broken things and you restore them. And tonight we stand in your presence grateful for that. We want to give you our highest praise, Lord. Let nothing keep us back from worshiping you. Let nothing stifle our praise or silence our voice in this place. Come on, where you stand, can you just lift up your hands? If you feel comfortable, it's just a sign, just a symbol of surrender, just a symbol that he is on that throne, that we worship him, that he is higher above every situation in our life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We surrender this moment to you, Lord. Turn great. 
for time there's nothing Oh, there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you There's nothing Nothing is better than you We declare that to you, Lord Lift your hands and sing that one more time Come on Oh, there's nothing Better than you, there's nothing better than you, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. We see you turn graves into gardens. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. Turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one. You're the only one. Who can. One last time. You're the only one who can.
Right, everybody, real quick, close your eyes. If you feel comfortable, you can put a hand in the air. I love what the song says that his name makes darkness tremble. I think this season looks a little dark, right? It's been crazy, it's been painful, but we have hope tonight knowing that Jesus makes that all go away. Where Jesus is, there cannot be darkness. And tonight we have an opportunity to come together as the vibe as young adults and say, I'm not going to let darkness control me. I'm not going to live in fear. I have Jesus on my side. And so right now with your eyes closed, hands in the air, if you feel comfortable, you're just making yourself available for God to do something tonight. We had a time of worship. We're about to go deeper. But I want you to think, whatever you came in here with, whatever darkness, whether it has to do with coronavirus or just the nation's unrest, whatever it is, God knows. And he has a plan for you. And he wants to do something in your heart tonight if you're available. So with eyes closed, hands lifted, we're just going to pray. And we're going to move on with the night, expecting God to do something. Well, God, we praise you tonight that you are a God of light. That where there may be darkness, darkness cannot exist if you are in the room. And we're thankful that we have a place to come, that we can lift your name. We don't have to worry about what's waiting for us outside, that we have an opportunity to go to go deeper with you, to go closer with you. God, I lift up every single need in this room, every hurt, every dark spot that is represented here. God, and I ask you, put, begin to put your finger on it. Have your way the rest of this service. And we're thankful that when we praise you, you hear us, you meet us where we're at, and that you work in the midst of our darkness. Have your way in the west, rest of this service. We love you in your name we pray amen amen vibe you guys can go ahead and back to your seats man are you happy to be a revive can we make some noise again man i love doing our hangouts on sundays but i love that we have something to look forward to when it comes to revive where we can worship and listen to the word but one thing that we have not taken a break from but it just looks a little bit different is our giving most of y'all know that we were we were on a little break when we had coronavirus so things have shifted but i'm happy that as young adults we don't have to you know take a back seat to what god wants to do here at this church here in this ministry we can put our hands we can be hands on a part of the action and what god wants to do because listen y'all This stuff costs money. I'm just going to say it. It just does. It just does. But listen to what it says in Luke chapter 6. It says, give and it will be given to you. Amen, right? Like that sounds good. We can all get on board with that. But later on, in a couple scriptures later, it says this. For the measure that you use to give, it will be measured back to you. And so, yeah, we talk about giving a lot. But if your mindset is that giving is an obligation, something that you have to do, you're not going to reap all of the benefits that come from it. If you give with a measure of expectation, if you give with a measure of hope, if you give with a measure of love, those are going to be the things that are given back to you. So yes, we give you an opportunity to honor God, to worship him like we just worshiped in song. You can worship him with your finances, but know that the way that you give, the condition of your heart as you give is how that's going to reflect what is given back to you. And then, guys, it's an honor as young adults that we don't have to just, you know, take the back road and let people give for us. No, we have our own money. We can do what we want. We can do what God has called us to do. So I'm going to encourage you to do that tonight. We have offering buckets set up at the front of the stage. Please do not come up here right now. After service, if you have an offering, you can drop it there. Or even easier, you can give online at our website, westcoastchurch.com, under the giving tab. You can also text to give by texting the letters WCC to 24365, and then you can designate your gift um, for Vibe, whether you're giving online or doing text to give. So can we just, you know, make some noise that we have an opportunity to, to do that this morning or tonight? Now I'm just going to pray, then we're going on with some announcements. But God, we thank you that you don't just call us to sit back, that as young adults, you want us to be a part of your plan here for at West Coast Church and here in the Vive and the community of Inglewood. I pray that you would use us tonight to do what only you can do, God. We can't, you know, make our money reach places. We can't make it help people, but you can take it and make it something beautiful. So we just ask that you take whatever we give to you tonight. I pray that we would give with a spirit of expectation, a spirit of hope, a spirit of love, knowing that it would be given back to us because that's the kind of God that you are. Have your way, multiply in your name we pray. Amen. Y'all, we have a lot of stuff coming up right now if my phone will unlock. Starting next week, we have a movie night. Yes. Now listen, movie theaters are just now opening up, but you don't even have to pay for this one. It's free. The only thing you do have to pay for is concessions, but it's only a dollar. You're not going to pay $10 for popcorn. But we're showing the movie Case for Christ. 
Christ. If you have seen that movie, it's incredible. If you haven't, it's still incredible. But listen, that movie answers a lot of really hard questions about faith and about God. So maybe you're in here tonight and you have some questions. You have some doubts. That is normal, I promise. But we encourage you to come, have those questions answered. It's also an opportunity for you to bring some of your friends that maybe have some questions as well. It's an incredible, powerful movie that is based on a true story of a man that had some doubts and God just showed up in his life. So that is next Sunday. We are not having child care though. So just keep that in mind, not having child care. We would love for you to come and be a part of that movie night and have some of those questions answered. And then September 6th, no vibe. Everyone say, aw. So sad, but on the set on the 13th, the following Sunday, we are coming back with a bang as we are kicking off the season. Some of y'all know what that day is, like my husband. Football's back, y'all, on September 13th. And if you don't care, say hey, hey. But listen, we are gonna hang out that night. We encourage you to come repping your favorite sports team, even if it's not football. Come repping the Rays. I don't care. Come wearing a favorite, you know, your jersey, your t-shirt, whatever it is, rep your favorite sports team. And then bring something to share, like a tailgate party or like a Super Bowl party. And listen, if you hate football, we are gonna have games set up. We're just gonna be doing our own little hangout thing, and all the football obsessed people can be in the youth room watching the game. But that's also an awesome opportunity for you to bring someone to church. Maybe they, you know, love football or just love free food. Have them come be a part on September 13th. And then if you have not gotten a Vive shirt yet, make sure that you do that. You can grab one tonight in the back with Abby. And we encourage you, wear that out in public. Don't just wear that at home as your pajamas. Use that to invite people to come and be a part of the best group in town. Do you believe that the Vive is the best? So rock that shirt everywhere you go. We encourage you when we have events, when we do revive, when we do um, our kickoff the season in a couple weeks, wear that. Let people know that there's something they can be a part of and they can look fresh like us when they wear their Vive shirts. I would have worn mine tonight, but I wore it last week and it's dirty. So I have hygiene. So make sure you guys get a shirt. We also have pop sockets for sale in the back. And I already said it, but if you're new, make sure you also visit Abby in the back um, so we can get to know you and get you plugged into our family. That's all I have, guys. Go ahead and check out the trailer for next week's awesome movie. If somebody wanted to do an investigation into Christianity, where would you start? If the resurrection of Jesus didn't happen, it's a house of cards. You sure you want to give me that loaded gun? I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to pull the trigger. I've spent my entire career as a journalist uncovering the truth. Until the day my wife presented me with the biggest story of my life. I'm not gonna lose my wife and my kids to something that I can't even reason with. And what happened next changed me forever. How can we even talk about historical evidence for the resurrection? The Gospels are filled with contradiction. The empty tomb is based on evidence. And isn't evidence your trade? We all bet our lives on something. The question is, what's it gonna be? As much as I would like to help out a fellow skeptic, what you're proposing is impossible. Could Jesus survive being spiked to the cross? There is no evidence of anyone ever surviving a full Roman crucifixion. Just because I write something down and I bury it in the dirt, it doesn't make it true. But I felt with something more real than anything I've ever felt in my life. I'm praying for you. Do you really want to know the truth, or is your mind already made up? Stop blaming me and the church and God and do your job. ever proven if the shroud is the actual burial cloth of the Christ. But whenever someone looks in those eyes for the first time, suddenly becomes a real person. I'm excited about seeing that. Now I want to encourage you again about this movie. This movie, if you've seen it, or your relationship with God is secure, that's great. But that is not the purpose for us showing this movie. It's so that we can answer some questions that you may not know how to verbalize to your friends. It's scientifically proven. Scientists will prove it in here. Um, theologically, they'll prove it. Medically, they'll prove it. And historically, they'll prove that it was a true story. It's not fictional. And so uh, what I love about this story is, is that um, this guy, he, actually this story, the movie is based on his book. And it was a bestseller. Uh, and, of course, you can tell from the hair what uh, 
season it was in that time. But he was absolutely against that truth. He said it was a lie. It was made up. It was fictional. And he had a job to do. And he wanted to prove through journalism that it was not true, that Christ was not real, that it was this falsehood that we had all kind of been sucked into. So I encourage you. The reason why we're showing this movie is for this purpose. Everybody say this purpose. So here's the purpose. Sometimes you don't know how to witness to your friends. Or maybe you yourself are struggling with what you believe. Your faith, you're struggling in your faith. Or you have a friend that says, you know what, I'm an atheist. Or I don't really know if I believe all that's real. Well, we're providing a movie that can answer all those questions if you would just get your friends here. I want to encourage you. I know you know someone that is struggling, someone that doesn't know truth, someone that doesn't even believe that Jesus is real. He's just kind of like a, a Nike sign, you know? I mean, it's, it doesn't change your life. But I want you to know Jesus is real, and this movie will answer some of their questions just like it did for this journalist, changed his life. And I want to say, too, when you give your heart to the Lord, it causes division. Sometimes you don't hear that, but whenever you decide to serve Christ, there's going to come a parting. Uh, from your old friends because they won't like what you're doing and you won't like what they're doing anymore what used to be acceptable in your life are you listening to me is not acceptable anymore and that's when you know that you've made some changes I, I can remember there were a lot of things that I approved of and I did but when I sincerely gave my heart to the Lord I was not comfortable with my friends in that environment anymore with, with us getting drunk at night or, or everybody rolling joints and getting, I, even though I was not a drinker and I didn't smoke joints, I was not there for the purpose of sharing Christ. I was just there to hang out with my friends. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be that girl at school that, hey, they liked me. I was a Christian, but I could fit in anywhere. My purpose was not to go and change lives. But when I really got a hold of Christ, my purpose changed, and it was to reach other people with the love of Christ. But I couldn't just sit and laugh while they were rolling joints or my two best friends were going in the back, and I knew that they were, you know, screwing around, messing up. I knew that she might get pregnant and he might have to walk away, and, and that did happen with some of my friends. And, and I realized that my purpose had changed. Has your purpose changed? I, my course had changed. Has your course changed? And so I want to encourage you, this is the time to bring people who are un, unsure of what they believe. If, if, if you're watching on the stream, I want to encourage you, come and be here with us. Uh, make sure that you, you can show up if you're locally or you're not too far away. Make sure that you, you get connected in this time. I promise you, you won't, be, you, won't be you won't be disappointed in any way, shape, or form. And I wanted to say to some of you that are brand new tonight, some, I saw some first-time guests here tonight. Can we just give them a big welcome and say thank you so much for joining us? It's awkward when you're brand new and you don't know anybody. You've just moved to Little Inglewood. I'm sure it's a shock from where you've come from because it's about one of the smallest places you can be in. But there's one good thing I want to tell you about Inglewood. Jesus is in this place, and he is somebody to know, and he makes all of the difference in the world. Tonight I want to ask three questions. You know, Jesus was always teaching and training and asking questions. He was always sharing stories and, and trying to engage the listener. And tonight I want to engage you. And the way to engage somebody is to ask them questions and let them answer those in their mind. So here's the three questions I want to pose to you tonight is, what will you choose, what will you do, and what will you gain? I want to say that again. What will you choose, what will you do, and what will you gain? My hope uh, tonight is that you can start a brand new wonderful life if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That sounds so big and seems so weird. If, you, if you've not heard those, that terminology, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, well, we all know what a king is. And a king is a ruler and he has a throne and he has a group of people that are his subjects. And, and a good king takes care of his subjects and his people and he provides what they need. So if, if you can understand that, you can understand that Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And you can understand that he has a throne and the Bible says that he reigns and that he rules and he wants to reign and rule in your life in your life and he wants to give you what you need because you belong to him isn't it nice to know that you can belong to a king of kings the only king of kings well you ought to be excited so that's my hope tonight you can start a brand new life a life lived for christ many times when god was speaking he would state a truth 
Then he would ask a question. He would clarify the answer and explain how to. I hear people say all the time, I don't understand this. It doesn't make sense. I don't think I can do it. But there's, there's some things in here I read, and I'm like, huh, what? You know, I don't get it. But let me tell you what. For every 10 scriptures that I'm not sure what it means, there's a 1,000 of them that I can read and I can understand. So I want to encourage you. Get in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's just a lot of stories about how Jesus was born, how he came, how he lived, how he showed mercy and grace, and how he taught, and how he reached out, and how he died. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not the end. And how he rose from the dead. So that changes everything for you you and I. So I, I want you to understand there are answers in here. And God is not threatened with your questions. He's not threatened when you say, I don't understand that or I don't, I don't get that. You want me to love my enemy? Do you know what they just did to me? You want me to be kind to that person? You want me to pray for that person? Listen, everything about Jesus is opposite of your flesh because he's not natural. He's supernatural. He doesn't do the natural. He does the supernatural thing. So when you think about love, he's not talking about your kind of love. Your, your love goes so far. And then when you offend me, guess what? I don't love you as much anymore. Come on, am I telling the truth? Am I talking to anybody tonight? I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Uh uh. I see fights in church. I see people not speaking to one another, arguing and offended with one another over silly, petty stuff that doesn't even matter. So when you talk about your love, that's not the kind of love God is talking about. God is talking about when you're your lowest low and your meanest mean and your lost moment. He's still going to love you. He's still going to believe in you. He's still for you. He is not against you. Now, that's the kind of love I want. Tonight, we're going to look at Matthew 16, 24 through 26. And I can't help it. When I preach, I get so excited. You know why? Because I'm sharing the truth. I'm not sharing a truth. I'm sharing the truth. There's only one truth. Jesus Christ said this. I am the way. Hello. You looking for the way? I am the truth. Some of us have bought into a lie. But he said, I am the truth and I am the life. If you want to know the way, if you want to experience truth and you want to have some good life, Jesus is the one and he's the way. I can't help it. I love to preach the good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. So we're going to look at Matthew 16, 24 through 26. And then Jesus said to his disciples, now we talked about questions. He's going to ask questions. He's going to present a truth. He's going to clarify what the answer is, and he's going to explain how to. So see if you see those things in here. Jesus said to his disciples, if, everybody say if, if any of you wants to, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Now, some, some say turn from yourself, deny yourself. But when you look that up, it's selfish ways. God's not interested in you not loving yourself. He wants you to love yourself. Love thy neighbor as thy, love your neighbor like you love. Well, if some of you loved yourself like you love your neighbor, it wouldn't be very good, would it? He's trying to help you say, hey, look, let me, let me look how I tweet them and let me look how I tweet myself. You need to tweet yourself good. So listen to what he's saying. If any of you wants to, if it's a question, right? He's presenting you something. If anyone wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways and take up your cross and follow me. I like the, the, the neat um, uh, thing in this, in this part of the scripture that's so neat to me when he says, take up your cross and follow me. Well, we all know the story about Jesus taking up his cross. And we know he went to Calvary, and we know that he was laying down on this cross, and, and they put nails in his hands and his feet and a crown of thorns, and they, they raised him up, and then he died there, right? So he's saying, if you want to follow me, you got to lay your life down for me. And I got news for you. It's not taking your cross up, bringing it to church. It's, tear, it's carrying that cross on your back and crucifying this old flesh every single day. And so that you get to the place where you say, hey, it's Jesus that lives in me. It's Jesus that people, oh, somebody. It's Jesus that people can see because I got my cross. Now, I've seen people carry things on their back. You can't really see it, but it's a grudge. It's anger. It's offense. It's self-pity. It's woe is me. That's not what he's looking for. He said, look, if you want to follow me, 
I'm going to tell you what you got to do. You got to give up your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. And I, I want to share some good news tonight. You say, I can't do that. I, I really struggle with that. The Bible says that his grace is sufficient. His grace is more than enough. He's given you everything that you need in order to live that crucified life. He's, listen, we get this idea that when we fail, we start all over. So here's what happens. We give our lives to Christ. We fail. We make a mistake. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. And here's what comes in your mind. You're not a Christian. You're not saved. You, you're, you couldn't be right. You couldn't be right with God. I've got news for you when you're born into the kingdom you get the name that belongs to the father and even when you're failing he might come along and spank your bottom a little bit but he's never going to kick you out the door and say you're not mine he's going to say you're mine and I'm going to help you get it right because my grace oh somebody is sufficient for you See, it's not how good you are. It's how good he is. It's not how good you do. It's all the good things that he already did. Is anybody listening to me? That makes me feel free. I can take up my cross and I can follow him. He said, if you try to hang on to your life, listen what it says. Look at it on the screen. If you try to hang on, make your own decisions, make your own plans, and only call on God when things are really bad. He said, if you try to hold on to that so super tight, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose it. You can't do that. If you're going to follow him, you just got to let it go and give it all to him because he can handle all of your weaknesses, your shortcomings, your failures, and who you are because he's bigger than all of that somebody. But if, everybody say if, there's that if again, but if you give up your life, oh, a lot of people have given up their life for a lot of great causes, but listen to what he says, if you give up your life for my sake, see, that's a whole different perspective. There's a lot of great men and women who have died for great causes, and they've left a mark in history. I don't miss this. But there's one Jesus Christ who died, and he makes a mark in our soul. And that is more eternal than making a mark in our society or in our community or in our government or in our history books. This is one that will change you forever. Because I want to tell you something tonight. Everything that has to do with God is eternal. That's the reason why I want you to think about what you're doing. Think about the decisions that you're making because what you do today will affect you tomorrow. You listen to me. What you get in deep in today, you're going to try to climb out of tomorrow. And what you grab a hold of today, you're going to be trying to shake hold. Oh, I want to get free from that. Let go of that. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. But if you give up your life for my sake, oh, you'll save it. See how everything is backwards? You, you, you give up your life for him, and you save it. You try to hold on to your life, you'll lose it. Because everything about Jesus Christ is eternal. I love this part. Verse 26 says this, and he's going to ask you this question. And what do you benefit? Everybody say benefit. Say it again, benefit. I'm going to ask you that are watching, listen to this part. It's so powerful. Jesus is asking you this question. Tonight, right, where you're sitting, maybe you're watching me from your phone in your car. Maybe you're in the bathroom. Maybe you feel like tonight there's nothing for you to live for. Maybe in this room you have given up the good fight of faith. You're discouraged. Listen, listen to this question that Jesus is asking you. It's not an accident that you've tuned in. It's not an accident that you're in the seat. Listen to what Jesus is saying. What do you benefit if you gain the whole wide world, but you lose your soul? Is there anything worth more than your soul? See, he's talking eternal. Eternal. You're going to live somewhere forever. It won't be here. It's appointed unto man and woman after they live to die. We're all going to die at some time. Right now, you can think of probably three people that you already know that you cannot believe that were young that have passed away. Am I right? Died in a car wreck. Had a surgery. It didn't work out. Committed suicide. Overdosed on a drug. Who would have thought? We would have said they would still be here today. They're young and they're gone. Listen, what will you gain? What are you willing to swap for your soul for eternity? 
Your soul is who you are. And that soul possesses a spirit and lives in this old body. And this body is going to be gone one day. But this soul is going to live on forever. So it needs to be right with God. Somebody say amen. So the first question is this. What will you choose? We see in the scripture that we just read, Jesus is asking a question. He says, if anyone wants to, he, he's offering you. He's such a gentleman. Hey, if you want to, you could, you could come over. If you want to, we could be friends. If you want to, I could carry that load. If you, you want to, I, I could give you something to live for. If you want to, you could experience my forgiveness and, and get rid of that guilt that you're carrying. If you want to. It's a choice. You and I get to choose. Everybody say choice. I hear people say all the time, I try and I can't do it. Yes, you can. You can. You can follow after God. I can tell you I'm 65 years old, and I can tell you every chance I get, I'm down here, and I'm praying. When I'm in a service, I'm listening to what the pastor's got to say. And there are many, many times, even though I've served God for years and I love him, I want to tell you there's always this constant communication and relationship, not where I live in fear that my sins are going to control me, but when I make a mistake, I always say, Jesus, I love you, and I thank you that your grace is sufficient for my my problems I thank you that Lord God no matter what I do and no matter where I am I have a heart for you and when I come up short because everybody comes up short everybody say comes up short but see it's that grace that stands us up it's that grace that dusts us off it's that grace that puts a crown on our head it's that grace that puts a smile on our face it's that grace that makes our heart right that's what happens when you know Jesus Christ Deuteronomy says this chapter 30 Listen to these words, verse 19. Today, this is Moses. Moses, matter of fact, uh, as you're looking at that scripture, I'll give you a little background. Moses had led all the children of Israel out of Egypt. Egypt is a type of bondage. You know that if you know anything about the story about baby Moses being raised up as a great leader, a deliverer. He represents Jesus Christ coming to set his people free. It's not just a, a fairy tale. It's a real story that happened. But it's a representation of Jesus who was to come. Who would come and make us free from our bondage. That would come and give us the words of God himself. And he would put them in our heart. And he would live among us and walk among us so we could be his people and so Moses had come to set the people free and the Bible says there was over two million people that left Egypt I love this story but see they'd been slaves for centuries and centuries and centuries their grandparents had been slaves their great grandma and great grandpa had been slaves. they had been enslaved they had been abused they had been beaten down they had lost their dreams they had lost their hopes you know what happens in a family when that happens they just pass it down from one generation to the next generation this brokenness I pass down to these kids and these kids pass it down to these kids well everybody in our family gets the divorce because that's what we all do can I tell you Moses came as the deliverer but Jesus Christ came as the eternal deliverer to make us free now when they came out everybody say out see they came out that's what you do you come out of your Egypt I came out of my Egypt but we forget that we're out of bondage and we still live like a bunch of slaves uh oh uh oh we, we've been made free come on out come on out of there honey come on you can be free I preached in the jail many many times and when you go to the jail it, it's really scary I think the scariest place I ever went I, I went to the men's prison countless times with 150 men in one room I was the only female in there was me. And the scariest place I ever been was not in the men's penitentiary. They showed me a lot more respect was the women's side. Oh, dear Jesus. It was horrible. All I could think, I was shaking. I know my hair was shaking like this. My legs were shaking. The things they said to me and the things, the gestures they made and the things that they were doing was, I, I didn't know what to do with it. And one of the other worst times was when they put me in with the juvenile first degree murderers. 21 juveniles. The saddest thing I ever saw. There was so much hatred, so much brokenness, so much perversion in that one little room. Because, see, they were living in bondage. And can I tell you, when you live like a slave, you act like a slave. A slave. But the greatest thing I ever experienced was after they took me in the back and they set that, uh, that, that guard, hit that button, and it went, and if you know anything about concrete and metal, when it slams, it makes this, 
echo sound. I was locked in there. Me and this young girl from my church, and I was young at that time too, were the only two females. The pastor came back with us. He said, I'll be back in an hour. I was wanting to go, don't leave us. We're locked in there. The best sound I ever heard was when I heard that buzzer go, eh, and that door began to slide open. You think I didn't exit out of those bars? I couldn't wait to get out of that place. I wanted to be free, and that's what God wants for you. He wants you to listen to the sound of the doors being open. You're no longer a slave. He wants you to put your shoulders back, hold your head up, walk out of there like you're not a slave anymore. We are not to be slaves to sin, for His grace is sufficient if we will just follow him so here's what Moses said he came down from the mountain and here's the words the Lord gave him today I give the choice between life and death now when you hear that you go well everybody would choose life once again he's talking about eternal we always just think about temporal come on eternal I want to say it again today I give the choice between life and death Moses is saying this on the behalf of God he said, between blessing and cursings. Well, everybody would want blessings, right? Everybody would want life. Nobody wants death. Nobody wants cursings. I've been cursed out many times. My dad used to let it rip and tell me what I was and what I wasn't. And I can tell you, when I left the room, I didn't feel very valuable. I'll take blessings every day. He said, I'm giving you the choice. And here he goes on to say, he said, now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make the choice you make I want to say to you I'm proud of you you keep coming back if you keep coming back and you keep getting your Bible and you keep talking to God and you keep praying see this is what we think we think when we come to Christ and the doors open our Egypt they have said we can go we come out well listen if we've been a slave for a long time it's hard to learn how to be a free man am I right I don't know anything about that a free woman I'm not a man so I only know about being a free woman but I can tell you sometimes it's hard to say wait a minute I don't have to live like that anymore wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute that's the way we used to talk when we were in Egypt we don't talk like that anymore wait a minute that's what I used to do when I lived in Egypt but I don't live in Egypt anymore hey wait a minute that's the way I used to act when I lived in Egypt and I was a slave to sin but I'm not there anymore I'll come out and I am free oh that you would choose life and I thought that was so incredible just that statement that he, he would say oh come on that you would choose life and we know that what happens is is when we act like a slave we begin to think that we can't be free am I right oh that's all I know that's all I know that's all I, listen we never had nothing it's hard for me to think now but I don't even know how to enjoy it I, I don't I don't know how to do that I, I've never been a part of that this that's so foreign to me hold on if you'll just stay with the king of kings if you'll just walk with the great I am he will change you year after year day after day something will happen you know what without you even knowing it if you just hang around God's people and God's word in God's presence all of a sudden it begins to rub off on you oh what's that that's a little Jesus right there oh what's that I got a little Jesus over there oh what's that right there I got a little Jesus there I don't sit like I used to sit I don't stand like I used to sit I got Jesus I've been rubbing shoulders with Jesus I'm somebody dear. don't give up oh that you would choose life so that you and your descendants that baby is your descendant those babies in the room they're your descendants so that they might live see that's what God wants for you to live and to be happy and joy he's not interested in punishing you Jesus already took your punishment on the cross so that you don't have to bear it anymore why would you bear it he wants you to live he died so you could live he died so you could live he died so you could live oh he said so you can make the choice you can you can make the choice by loving the Lord your God. It's amazing. It doesn't say that you can make the choice by being perfect before God. I'm not giving you a license to sin. When you know Christ, it feels uncomfortable. But I know this. That little baby that she's holding in her arms couldn't do anything without mommy and daddy holding him. He would starve to death. He would die. They bathe him, right? You do. 
occasionally. <laughs> she bathes him. They change his diaper. See, that, that's, if you could see mommy with the baby, that's the love of Christ. I'll do everything for you. Then, then, then when he's four, they're not going to change his diaper anymore. They're going to put pull-ups on him and spank him and put him on the potty and give him M&Ms if he uses the potty. And then eventually, he won't want mommy and daddy's hands. When da Come hold mommy's hand, hold daddy's hand. Uh-uh, they don't want to. I'm independent. I can remember when my son was so determined to put his own shoes on. He was so proud, but he always put them on the wrong feet. And I'd say, baby, that's not the right feet. He'd get so upset because he would and he could tie. He's, Daniel always had his tongue out. He could tie, but he couldn't tie. It was horrid. I don't think he learned to tie shoes till he was 13. I don't know. It was, he was pretty old. <laughs> but I would let him try. Because what happens is, is, just like that baby growing up under the influence of mom and dad, if you stay in the presence of God, you'll grow up. Hello? You'll grow up. Eventually, you'll put the bottle down, take your thumb out of your mouth, and you'll say, you know what? I'm ready for some real food up in here because I got some teeth in this mouth now, and I'm ready to do things different. He says, I want you to choose by loving the Lord your God. And look what he says right after that, obeying him. And committing, everybody say commit. Commit yourself. No, everybody didn't say that. Say commit. commit. That's the part we don't like. We can't. It's like a cuss word. Ugh, we can't say it. Oh, it makes me gag. <laughs> I don't want to say obey or commit. Really, people, this generation is funny about that. Did you say commit? Oh, my God, that's a really bad word. But, you know, you can't have anything without commitment. For that baby to come forth and for the job that you have or the grades that you made, it took commitment or the lack of it. Commit yourself firmly. Everybody say firmly. See, if you could just understand that when you come out of Egypt like the children of Israel, if you'll just say, I'm committed to going this direction. I know I'm going to fall off of here sometimes. I'm going to trip. I'm going to fall. I, I, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to disappoint people. I'm going to lag behind. But I'm never going to stop going. I'm never going to stop. I'm out of, uh, today, I could only take a half a baby step. But that's one step in the right direction. But, boy, the next day I took about four. Okay, but then two days later I went a little back. You know, but if you just won't give up, just point that face this direction. Don't be looking back there. Let's get going in the right direction. I almost just tripped and failed. Okay, whatever. God's love gives an invitation. Have you ever gotten an invitation to some party or special event? I mean, like somebody you really like that was really important and special invited you to attend some incredible wedding and none of your friends got invited. Or you got this great party. They called you and they invited you. But man, this is the party of the parties. This person's really popular and they invited me. You know how you feel when you get an invitation to something important? Who wouldn't like those kind of invitations? Can I tell you that Jesus Christ has given you the best invitation of all? He said, choose the day. And if you choose me, I'll give you life. I remember um, we were living in Mulberry. Uh, one of our friends is a, a national ski champion, and, and so he had invited us. He had a friend that was a NFL football player for the Dallas Cowboys. He was retired at this time. But our friends, uh, Caroline and Frankie Dees, said, do you want to go to this uh, award ceremony? And you have to dress up really nice, and it's a, a dinner, and you get to be where the NFL football player is sitting up here with us. Oh, man. You don't think I didn't get me some new threads? I got me some cool looking shoes. I got my hair done because I've got an invitation to be with someone important. And I'm going to tell you, that's the way we need to view Jesus Christ, that the invitation he gives us is a very important invitation. We need to look our best, give our best. Even in our weaknesses, we give him all that we got. We can't wait to sit with him. We can't wait to look in his face. We can't wait to take a shot with him. Afterwards, we're like, here, take a picture. I was scooting Pastor Dan over so I could get next to him. He was big. He was awesome. He was incredible. I could not wait to have my picture made with him because he was important. Jesus can't wait to do life with you because you are important. So what will you choose? Number two, what will you gain? I'm almost done. 
Everybody say gain. Well, Jesus asked earlier in the scripture, he said to these disciples, he said, well, what are you going to gain if, if you gain this whole world, but you lose your soul? He's asking you to that, that tonight. You, only you can decide that. What, we, what do you want to gain? What will you gain? You see, he's trying to help you think eternal bigger than the little decision of today or the decision of tomorrow but your soul well there's by following Jesus Christ just as we get an invitation for an opportunity for a new job or an opportunity to work in the armed forces or or get a promotion or even in a relationship a financial investment or even something as simple as a weight loss program you and I want to know what's in it for us am I right we want to know what will I get in return for this commitment, what do I gain? Everybody say gain. See, Jesus knows that you ask those questions. Hey, God, what, what's in it for me? Isn't it funny how we feel like we have to give up so much? I remember my brother showed up at the house late one night, and if he was here, he'd tell you the truth. I don't think he'd had a bath in, in a week. He was living in his dumpy old truck. His clothes were filthy. He didn't have any food, no job, no money. And I was sitting on the front porch with him. I came out to see him. I said, Bubba, I love you. I said, but if you don't change your life. I said, you know what? I said, you're 35. And 10 years from now, I'll have this talk with you again. You'll just be 45, but you'll just be like you are. And then I'll have this talk with you again when you're 55 or 65. I said, well, you got to make some quality decisions. you got to choose. And he said to me, I don't think I can give up this life. What? I said, what? Your crappy old truck and your filthy old clothes and you got no job and no respect and no food and no money in your pocket. That's a great life. I, I don't blame you. I don't want to hold on to that. I remember he dropped his head. I said, you don't have a life. You're just breathing, but you're not alive. Jesus wants to give you life. I can tell you, from that night forward, I began to see a change in him. He began to be a different person. You can be too. I want to close with this and give you a couple of benefits you get and close with one scripture. And this is the benefits that are listed. If you want to put it in your phone, because we're not going to pull the scripture up, I'd be here all night reading it. But it's Psalms 103, 1 through 12. And here's some of the benefits that you get. I'm going to go really super quick. He forgives your sins. He heals all your diseases. He offers you eternal life. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion and restores your soul. He satisfies your desires with good things. His blessings are tailor-made just for you. This is all in Scripture. Read it when you get home. Psalms 103. He does not treat you as you deserve. Uh-oh. He does not treat you as you deserve to be treated based on your sins. Or repay you according to your iniquities, even though your sins separate you from him for eternity, unless you accept him. He is patient with you and loves you greatly. His love never gives up on you. He removes your transgressions as far as the east is from the west. He has compassion on you, just as a father has compassion on his child. He adopts you into his family and into his kingdom. So tonight, what will you do? What will you choose? What will you gain? You want to gain all that? So the question is now, what will you do? Revelation 3.20, and this is the last scripture. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> You're watching me online. I know that I know when I preach the truth that God demonstrates his word by the power of the Holy Spirit to reach right where you are. Right where you are. Right where you are. Isn't that good to know? He sees you. He knows your name. Revelation 3.20 gives us a great picture. And it's, I'll just read it to you. Close your eyes and picture this. This is Jesus saying this in Revelation. Look. I stand at the door. And knock. 
It's talking about your heart. Look, I stand at the door and I knock. And if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. I will share a meal with you and together we'll be friends. Do you see the picture he's setting? He didn't say, if you open the door, I'll come in and, and, and I'll, I'll get this house in order in 10 seconds. I'm going to lay out a rule book and I'm going to tell. He's so much more than that. You hear my voice? You hear me knocking? And you choose to open the door of your heart. I'll come in. I'll come in. I'm waiting to come in. I want to come in. I want to come in your life. I want to come in your mess. I want to come in your lack. I want to come in your struggle. I want to come in your destruction. I want to come in. And if you let me come in, then we'll sit at a table together like friends. We'll, we'll be close. I'll take all the stuff that you don't know what to do with. I'll make the necessary changes I'll make the repairs and the restoration things you couldn't afford because your sin costs too much but I'll fix it Jesus is asking he is inviting us to follow him he is willing to show us the way he's willing to direct us guide us walk with us and live in us so tonight I leave you with these three questions what will you choose what will you gain? What will you do? With every head bowed and every eye closed, and you, you keep watching me, okay? But right where you're sitting, right where you are, the presence of the Lord is there. It's here. I'm going to get you to pray with me tonight. If you don't know him, you don't know Jesus, but you tonight you're feeling him knock at your heart's door. Oh, you can feel it so strong. You can, you can feel that you want to come out and live like a free man, a free woman instead of a slave to sin. And tonight you want to be free. Tonight you want to say, Lord, I want you to be the, the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to repent of my sins. I want to walk with you and be a friend with you. But maybe you don't know him. So right where you're sitting and watching or, or right where you are standing with me, if that's you, would you just raise your hand, Pastor Nate, and say, I want you to pray for me. Come on, there's one, two. Come on, there's more. That's two, three. Maybe you, where you're sitting, you can just lift your hand right there in your living room or in your car and say, see me, Lord. Would everybody in the room pray this? And I'm going to encourage you to pray it with me online too. Would you pray this with me? Say, dear Lord, the best way I know how, after hearing this message, you're knocking at my heart. I hear you. I open the door to my heart. I reveal all my sin to you. I repent. Come on, say, I repent of my sin. I don't want to be a sinner. I want to be your child. I want to be your friend. So right now, say it again, right now, I give myself to you in your precious name. Amen. And Lord, I pray for everybody watching and everybody in this room. I pray that we'll make the right choice. We'll choose life. We'll choose you. We'll gain all those things that you have offered us. Restoration, hope, life, freedom, redemption. Tonight we love you and we know that even those that are watching, that you've not forgotten a one of them. We are precious in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for coming tonight. The Vive is an awesome place where you can get the real stuff. We preach and teach the good news here. We get great worship. And best of all, you can make a friend. So if you see somebody you don't know, go introduce yourself. Say, hey, I'm Joanne, or hey, I'm Ralph, or I'm Susan, or whoever the heck you are. Go and say hello to them. Make them feel welcome. Welcome. God bless you. Have a great night. If you have your babies, you can't hang. You have to go get your babies. Then you can come back. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on. All right. That's not good. Come on. You can do better than that. Come on. Yeah. Woohoo. All right. Don't forget.